Hi everyone, and thank you for being with us this weekend. We had a lot of fun and we hope you did too. Congratulations to all of you. We saw some amazing projects and it's really, really great to see what you accomplished this weekend. So just because I don't want to uh, keep you waiting to see who the winners are, um, let's start by announcing the winners for the challenges from the Oxford Hack Committee. So just before that, I will let Dan introduce you to some honorable mentions and um, we will play the videos for those projects. Hello everybody, I'm Dan Ordinez. We had some amazing projects this year and it was a really difficult choice. So we decided we might as well show some honorable mentions for some things that were really out of this world. So if we would like to begin with, drum roll please. Spicy chess, cue the clip. Are you feeling bored at home? Is chess just not doing it for you? Then check out our game. We all know that chess is a fun game, but let's be honest, it's rough, repetitive and can drag on for hours. This is why we decided to make the game a little spicy. Hop on, let me show you how. Spicy Chess is a game completely made in React, Express.js, Socket.io, Heroku and Netlify. Wow! So you can bully, <clears throat> I mean, have fun with your friends from the comfort of your own home. In Spicy Chess, every single click matters. Every time you click, you have a chance of triggering a random effect that can lead to your victory or bring your ultimate demise. The effects include causing floods that wash all your units back to shore, killing or resurrecting one of your own pieces, or even bring upon the plague. Masks and all. Experience a battle like no other as your pieces evolve with every kill. Warning, we are not responsible for any rage-induced damage to your property. Get good, get home. Wow, what a way to start up. So, up next, we have another project that we would like to um, count as another honorable mention. So, if we would like to go on to... Light Together. If we could see the clip for this one as well. Light together, everybody. We love a bit of drama, don't we? Now, on to the next clip. And that would be... Tea cards. Unless Hello, I've said Oxford that. Hack 2020. We are James. Mark. And Christelle, and we cannot wait to show you what we did for the What The Hack Challenge. Our project, Tea cards is inspired by a popular favorite, Star Trek. Imagine the characters in Star Trek traveled in time to 2020. During that time, they discover a strange app called Twitter. They see all the tweets and are confused with everything that's going on. Now, they really want to help us. And the first part to solving a problem is identifying the cause of it. So, they decide to build a model inspired by L cars in to visualize the source of the problem. So, we wanted to automate getting information from Twitter, which is made a lot easier because Twitter has a really robust API. And what's even better is that someone has made a Python module called TweePy, which has all of the GET requests for us, and sends us back, well, uh, this. This interface wasn't very human-friendly, so we were inspired by the intrepid science carried out in Star Trek to make tea cars to evoke the feel of Star Trek while doing some interesting data analyses. By entering a query at the top here, you get access to three different visualizations, the first of which is a simple overview with a word cloud, bringing back the most important keywords and terms that were found on Twitter within the last seven days. The second is a co-occurrence graph, which is arranged hierarchically to show the most commonly associated words with some level of statistical significance to your original word. This is an excellent way to decide what words are worth exploring in the future. And then finally, we leverage some sequence analysis models in the background to make this third plot, which, which plots the polarity and subjectivity of the tweets. 
by plotting these on a 2D plane and using the colour to indicate what time they were tweeted, it's already p possible to make some interesting analyses. For example, the more subjective the tweet, the more polarising the opinions will be. Thank you. It looks like we're coming to the end of our honourable mentions section. So, if we'd like to go on to the last but not least, hold on to your hats, everybody, because it's... Froggy Chair Radio, everybody. Woo! If we'd like to watch the clip for this now. Have we found it? Yes. Finally. Froggy Chair Radio Froggy Chair Radio is a discourse box that allows you to play all of your favourite music 24 hours a day. Provided your favourite music is the Animal Crossing Wild World hourly soundtrack. Add Froggy Chair Radio to your Discord server, simply open the invites link, then send the play command in any channel, and enjoy your favourite music, play it 24 hours a day. It looks like we've come to the end of our honourable mention section. So, how about we skip on to the actual awards? Have fun, everyone! Thank you so much, Dan. Um, so yeah, let's let's move over to hack the hackers hack, and I'm gonna let Ilya introduce you to the winners of this one. Hello, everyone. I'm the technical director of Oxford Hack, and I'm here to reveal you to you the winning project for hack the hackers hack. But first. For the uninitiated, Hack the Hackers Hack was our challenge, where you guys got to decide one of our awards, basically, one of the topics that we needed to judge on. And the topic that you decided was keeping people connected in lockdown. So our winner for that category is Finamate. Cue the video. Empty town, quiet streets, scattered leaves. Drowned by computer science worksheets, you know that's not how uni life is supposed to be. But unfortunately, that's the reality during the lockdown in 2020. Tomorrow, under a warm sun and blue, blue sky, forget about computer science worksheets and find a mate to hang out. Now Nicole can go on findamate.online and she is confident that she will meet other Oxford students because we authenticate users with their Oxford email addresses. She wants to see whether there's anyone who wants to hang out tomorrow. So she browses existing hangouts that have been published by other students in the Find Hangouts tab. Great, she sees an art student. She's never met someone who studied that before. With just one click, Nicole can now match with Justin and this hangout will be scheduled for both of their profiles. They can see each other's contact information and now it's up to them to hang out. Obviously, social distance with a mask on. Nicole wants to initiate her own hangout. Nicole loves running, so she would love to run with someone in the university parks. She can specify people based on their college, subject, and year. And now Nicole's hangout will be shown to other users who meet her criteria. Then when another user clicks let's hang out on Nicole's hangout, this hangout will be confirmed for both of them and it will show, on, show up on their profiles. However, if any plans do change, both users are able to cancel. In our backend, we specifically designed two data structures to store the information for users and hangouts, as well as their connections. 
We also implemented a randomized matching algorithm that can find the best fit for two users for a hangout and satisfy people's specific needs. Ah, thank you very much for that. Uh, and now we're going to go to our next presenter. Um, thank you, yeah. So hack for a good cause, just to give you a bit of context, uh, context for this one. Um, it is basically pe uh, picking a good cause and then designing a project that could help or support it in any way. And I would like to mention that the prize for this one is not only the hacker's prize, but also a donation uh, to a charity of the winning team's um, choice. Right, so let's announce the winners now. Um, so the winning project is TrackerMate. Let's play their video. Hey Oxodac, this is the team Zero Buggers and we worked on the project Tracker Mate. So let me introduce my three mates. This is Kiran, Navi, Nitin and myself Vijayan. And of course I learned video editing for the submission process. And for problem statement we took a web publication to help the prison department to help the uh, jailers to track and control the prisoners inside the jail premises. So the novelty we introduce here is use of gesture recognition instead of keyboard for cost efficient purpose and also contactless activity during this pandemic period and voice recognition for uh, disabled people and uh, emotional intelligence to detect the agitation in the faces of the prisoners uh, if they carry any prohibited articles. Every inmate will be given credit points which will be reduced for every indisciplinary activity which will also provide additional advantage if maintained properly. So the tech stack we given here is uh, front end we use HTML, CSS, JavaScript and Bootstrap. We use Flask framework and for back end we use Python and MySQL. So this is the demo. This is the index page. And myself. And this is myself Vijayan. I am being recognized. And I want to go to the canteen. And I will show three so that I will be permitted to go. I have shown three. I will be permitted to go to the canteen and I will be subjected to emotional intelligence. If I done anything wrong, I will be permitted but an alert will be sent to the jailer. So the conclusion is that this project is very cost efficient and also a reliable system without any physical device attached to the prisoner. Our system makes sure the inmate is always tracked but has his own liberty inside the jail. The credit system will engage the inmates to maintain discipline and decorum inside the jail campus from which they can benefit later like remission for a special release something like that. This system reduces the burden of the jailer as they are monitored by a fully automated system. Thank you Oxford Act. Congratulations. So now let's move on to one hack to rule them all. Then if you can introduce them. Hello, it's me again. So, One Hack to Rule Them All was a hack that was supposed to be inspired by your love for sci-fi, for literature, you name it. The fan base is the telling point on this. The reason we chose this hack in particular is the fact that it was so diverse and could be used in so many different situations. Now, I myself am into tabletop and RPG. So, if we could like, if we could cue a drum roll, please, and congratulate the D&D Generous Suite. Now, if we could cue the video for that. Uh, welcome to our Oxford Hack 2020 Dungeons and Dragons Generator Suite um, by the people you can see here. So uh, we decided to make this to sort of help people get into playing Dungeons and Dragons and um, interact in a more digital format uh, in sort of time of lockdown. So we have all the tools you might possibly need to get started with your Dungeons and Dragons campaign. So to start off with, we have a map generator for those too lazy to generate their own. Um, so as you can see here, we have some mountain ranges, forests, some unusually square islands, but some villages, and you can just keep clicking and it'll keep on randomly generating loads of different maps, but let's say you don't want to go for the sort of old, boring colour look, you want to go for a more traditional or more old-fashioned sort of map, you just have to tick the box, and then when you click on the generate map, get it all in a lovely, slightly off grayscale, and then just untick it, and colour is restored. Moving on to our next tool, uh, is the character generator, um, which is really good for people who are only playing once and don't want to get too invested in having to manually go through and uh, calculate all their character values, so we can just randomly create as many characters as we like. Or let's say we like Marcus Smith here, and we like his attributes, but we don't like his name. We can just change his name, and let's call him Lenny, with two N's. So, now we've got Lenny. And as you're playing through the game, you can just change anything you need to with this menu on the side. So, you level up, and it just works. And with all of the saving throws and everything, it's all just calculated um, from your other stats, and saves you loads of time. Uh, also, if we really, really like Lenny and want to continue in a later session, we can just download him, and then afterwards you can upload a character and continue your playing session. 
Uh, moving on to our final feature, but for the dungeon masters out there, this is quite a fun one. It's the item generator, and it just allows you to generate loads and loads and loads of silly items with funny names. Uh, and if you want a certain type of item, you can generate trinkets, weapons, armor, and food. And that pretty much concludes the tour of our Oxford Hack 2020 Dungeons and Dragons Generator Suite. Congratulations! Now we're going to move on to the next of our competitions, the Ultimate Isolation Hacks. So, if we could have the next person take over from me. And that would be me. Uh, so, the next section is the Ultimate Isolation Game. And the Ultimate Isolation Game is, you know, a game that you can play with other people while you're in isolation. And, yeah, uh, let's see our winner, which is Distanced. Cue the clip. Hello, I'm excited to share with you what we built for this year's Oxford Hack. It's a game called Distanced, which is built around a scenario that we've all experienced in this weird year. You're dropped in the middle of an unfamiliar supermarket with your friends, and you each have a list of groceries that you need to collect without bumping into each other and violating social distancing rules. There are other patrons who cluelessly meander around the aisles, getting in your way, as well as your friends. And the game is designed to encourage you to communicate. It actually provides a web chat link so you can talk with your friends in live video streams as you play and try to navigate around each other and avoid stepping into other people's social distancing bubble for too much time before you collect your groceries. Right now we're just playing with two players from our team, but the game scales up to an arbitrary number of people and it can be a lot of really hectic and exciting fun. Of course, behind the scenes here, there's a lot of cool tech as well. Together, we spent a weekend of coding nonstop as a team of three to put this together. Personally, I worked on the network stack, but this would not have been possible without the help of my two teammates. Hello, my name is Karthik, and I'm from the University of Southampton. I study computer science with AI. In this game, I created some of the assets, the map, and the enemies. Hi, I'm Casey Nur from the University of Oxford and I worked on the food spawning, picking up the food, pretty much everything to do with food. If you're interested in learning more, be sure to check out our dev post on the Oxford Hack website, GitHub, where we've pre-compiled a runnable version of the game for Windows and Linux. And of course, we'd like to thank all of the people who uploaded Creative Commons assets that were used throughout the project. Thank you very much. And now to the next section. Thank you, Ilya. Uh, yeah, Sherban, please introduce the winners to What the Heck. Yeah, hi. I'm Sherban. I'm one part of the committee. Uh, for What the Heck, we wanted a working project, but also something that was crazy, something to, to blow our minds in a sense. And the winners um, managed to actually blow our planet, if you can imagine that. Uh, just in case you didn't guess it, the winners were close call. Uh, it was a really smart idea, something fun, uh, but also ultimately it was something very crazy. Uh, can we play the video now, please? Hi, I'm Harry, a second year mathematician from Oxford. I'm Ewan. I'm a second year physicist at Oxford. Our app is called Close Call. It's an asteroid simulation app. The objectives were to make something to get people interested in physics and other asteroid related phenomena, such as the extinction of the dinosaurs, as well as having fun along the way. This is how the app works. Firstly, the app queries the NASA NEO API to get the list of near-Earth objects which have come close to Earth within the last seven days. This data is then altered slightly to make sure that they collide. However, the size of the asteroid and the approximate shape of the orbit are attained. Once an asteroid impacts the Earth, the app queries the Landsat API to get a satellite image of the location where it collided. Additionally, it uses the approximate blast radius of an asteroid impact and a population API to find the number of people affected by the impact. This is what the app looks like when you open it. The Earth is in the centre and you'll be able to make out some asteroids. The asteroids are not to scale, otherwise they would be so small that you couldn't see them, but their proportions are correct. In the bottom left is the latest satellite image from an impact. It's a little slow to update because the NASA API is very slow. There are three buttons, one to reset the asteroids, one to center the view, and the last one lets you add new asteroids. Once an asteroid impacts, the image gets updated and a toast appears 
containing the number of people that would have been affected by an asteroid impact at that location. Thank you, Sherban, and congratulations, close call. So before moving on to our sponsor um, uh, winners, I just want to say congratulations to everybody for um, putting together such amazing project. It was really, really hard to choose the winners for our challenges. So we do hope you had fun. And again, congratulations to the winners. And now I'm gonna let Sonia introduce you to the sponsor prizes. Thanks, Alex. Um, hello everyone, uh, my name is Sonia, I'm the Sponsorship Director of Oxford Hack um, and again congratulations to everyone who took part in the challenges and um, thanks so much to all our wonderful sponsors um, and we really hope that you enjoyed all the mentoring and workshops provided by sponsors throughout the event um, and hopefully found them helpful in your designs. Um, but now for the first two challenges we'll start by MathWorks. So for the first challenge um, which is best use of MATLAB or Simulink. The winner is CNC circuits and components. Um, the judges from MathWorks were very impressed by the team's use of auto-generating Simscape models and connecting them to a web application. So now let's watch the video. Hey everyone, this is Hedgenia Junior Teza and my team and I tackled uh, a variety of challenges. We tackled the Echo AR challenge or the MathWorks challenge and let's jump right into it. So basically we created a, a Unity WebGL game application that sends data to the MATLABs to uh, validate if a circuit is working or not. So we re basically recreated a lab environment for assembling circuits. And so this is the MATLAB scripts that we created. And as you can see, when you click, I'll show you later, but when you click on the power button, it sends data to the MATLAB and then it executes this circuit right here and it validates and make sure that the circuit was assembled properly. So the game application we created was right here. We use Unity WebGL to deploy it to the website and we use HTML, CSS and materialize to add these directions around it. And basically to play it, you click on a object and you can move it with your keyboard and you click it again so that you could hard code it right there. But you, basically you could just assemble uh, a circuit right there. And this button right here is what sends the JSON data to the MATLAB to verify that the circuit is working properly. And last but not least, we worked on an AR mobile application and we used models from Echo AR and imported them into Reality Composer from Xcode. And basically this allows you to navigate what a proper circuit should look like. And right here, you can see a voltage sensor, you navigate further, you see a capacitor and you navigate even further, you could even see a resistor and that is basically it. Um, and thanks so much. Uh, and then we'll move on to the next challenge, uh, again by MathWorks, which was to reinvent learning. And surprisingly, again, circuits and components are the winners of this challenge. Um, we will not play the video again, though, because we've already seen it. Um, but let's move on to the next sponsor, um, which is VMware. And unfortunately, the results of the VMware challenge are still pending. So we'll soon announce the winner, and the judges will get in touch with the winning team to arrange the awards. Um, so stay tuned. Um, and let's move on to the next sponsor, which is Here Technologies. Um, and the challenge winner for the sponsored challenge is Safeway. Um, and the, um, the sponsors were impressed by the use of traffic API in a very clever way and providing a solution to travel while making sure some social distancing is maintained. So let's watch the video. As a healthy adult, there's many things that I need to do during the week, yet, Due to COVID, I'm not sure if the public transit is safe to take. If only there was a website that could tell me when um, the most people are on the public transit, so when it would be safest for me to go. Good question. That's where Safeways comes to play. Now, like Robbie said, every household still has to run their errands to survive. They have to go outside and use public transit. But it's very dangerous as many people also rely on it to get around. This is how our solution, Safeways, can help people find the optimal time to go on public transit to avoid COVID-19. Users are able to see the busiest and calmest times to see the best time to go out. And they're able to see just how much time they spend on foot versus on public transit so they can avoid 
human interaction. So now we're on the landing page of Safeways. And as you can see when you load in, we see destinations on the left side and in the interactive map on the right. Let's see what happens when you plug in some destinations. And so now we can see on the left side that there's a bunch of destinations. And on the right side, there's an interactive map again, where the first point is the University of Waterloo, which is the very first destination. And you can see all other destinations on the map. And this represents the main route, the entire total route. And above, we can see the time spent walking and the time spent in transit, shown by a pie diagram. And to the right of it, we can see a bar diagram of what we call the active hours, where people are most frequent uh, on tr public transit. And so now, if we click on uh, one, two, or three, we get taken to one of the side routes that we call. So this is only one node to its subsequent destination. And accordingly, we can see its own pie diagram and the active hours. Um, so congratulations to Safeways again. Um, and let's move on to the final Echo AR challenge. And the winner for that challenge is Fiber. Um, and the CEO of Eco AR selected that um, project as the winner um, and uh, was very impressed by the quality of all the submissions and they'll get in touch with the winners to send the award. And let's watch the video. Um, and that will be it when it comes to the sponsorship challenges. So congratulations again to everyone. And Alex, back to you. Thank you, Sonia. So yeah, last but not least, I'm going to play a video from Gregor from MLH introducing um, their challenges and the winners as well. So let's watch their video. Before I announce who the MLH winners are, I first want to give a massive round of applause and thank you to all of your hackers, uh, all of the mentors and judges, that have made, uh, helped make this event possible. I know you all put in a ton of effort to make this possible, and it was really awesome to see so many real cool projects. So without further ado, it's time to highlight some of the projects that have won some MLH and sponsor prizes. So first off is the best domain registered with domain.com, and that one goes to platformpanic.online. Uh, next up is the best use of Google Cloud, and there's been a ton of entrants here, and it was really difficult to choose a winner. But ultimately, I decided to give the prize to EPRG, so congratulations. The best DigiKey hardware hack goes to DIY MIDI Hub. And the best use of Datastax Astro goes to Unisupport Online. But it's not just all about coding, but it's also about drawing. And my favorite Octocat uh, winner of that drawing contest goes to Satya Rupa Sushri. So, Congratulations uh, to all of you for putting together some really amazing hacks. Congratulations to all of the winners. And I hope you all had an amazing time. And that's it for me. Right, so that would be all. But before we end, I just want to say thank you so much for participating this weekend. It was amazing just to see catching up with people during the weekend, seeing what they were up to, getting beaten at the Wikipedia game constantly, just interacting with everyone and seeing what, what you can create when you put your minds to it. So we've had a lot of really good projects. So congratulations to everyone, regardless of whether you won or not. Um, and I'm just going to bring the committee up back again so that we can say a final goodbye. Thank you so much, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.